the 2024 Bassmaster Elite Series schedule has been released. And while it's another new year, it's pretty much the same old thing. That's what we're going to talk about right now. I have a goal this year. It's a lofty goal. But to reach those goals, I need you as a subscriber. So do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button and become part of the family because you'll help me out and it'll bring you good luck. You'll have good karma while you're fishing. I don't know, but I can say it. My feeling about the 2024 schedule for the Bassmasters is like that X that you don't want to see. While you know their favorite position, and where to go and what they like to eat. But quite honestly, they're an X. You don't really want to have anything to do with them, but you know all their curves. Maybe that's the best way to put it. So while I think the 2024 season, it's good for, I think there's one spot. I think there's a couple spots that I just, I'm kind of sick of seeing them go. First and foremost, the schedule comes around the money money. Where bass can hold a tournament and get paid to go is where they go. They don't go put the classic someplace where there aren't the anglers or the places. It, this is a business that bass is trying to run. They're trying to make money. They are making money. They go to spots that people will pay them to go to. While you might be on the best place on earth if you're convention and visitors bureau doesn't have the money to pay bass to show up they're not showing up and there's a lot of spots that they will continue to go over and over and over for years and years and years because really it's the only thing going for that area while the fishing is probably pretty good it's that is it for them and that has a that is the whole reason why they go to certain places that's what you need to know right off the bat Today, we're going to look at the 2024 Bassmaster Elite Series, the schedule. And while there are, while it's a new year, it really isn't changing much. We're going to go through the schedule, some of the stuff about the lakes, and then also who I think you should be looking at if you're a fantasy fishing. We'll also talk about will forward facing sonar play a, a factor at these spots. There's gonna be a common theme that you're gonna hear in most of this stuff. There's one or two anglers that I think right now should be jumping up and down. Jump around. Jump around. And thanking the Bassmaster Elite Series people for picking the places. But we'll get to that at the end, but you'll, you'll hear it as it goes on. The first place they're starting this year is they're starting in Toledo Bend, different than most years. So going to Louisiana to start off the season I think is a positive for them. They haven't been in Louisiana for some time. They've since 2011 they've been there five times. 2017, 2016, 2014, 2012, and 2011. That lake is 181,000 acres and in 2017 John Murray won. He's now with BPT. And, 26, and 2017, Jason Christie and Palinick all finished up there in the top five. In 2016, Kevin Van Dam, Keith Combs, and Hank Cherry, which would be great. So I think if you're looking for fantasy fishing, I think you're going to find that Jason Christie, Keith Combs, those areas out there are really, they're really good anglers, especially Keith Combs in Texas. So for the first one, Tully Little Ben should be a little bit fun to watch, maybe a little early. It's going to be definitely pre-spawn for them, I think. But forward-facing sonar is going to play a little bit of a factor. Finding those stumps and what fish are on top of those stumps out there will help them catch fish. So while they haven't been there in, in seven years, there's still a little bit of history to a few anglers that probably will do pretty well. The second stop for the elites is at Lake Fork in Texas on the 29th of February through March 3rd. This is going to be a big bass fishing. There's going to be giants caught here. Uh, they, they At one time, well, the, the pond is 27,000 acres. The max depth is 70 feet, and it was an impoundment, made an impoundment in 1980. 
They have been to Lake Fork in 2019, in 2020, and in 2021. In 2021, Lee Livesey won, and Patrick Walters was up there. In 2022, Patrick Walters won, and Keith Combs was up there. Lake Fork is a great, going to be a great place to fish. It really is. It's going to there's going to be big giant bass. Forward facing sonar is going to have a play here too. Maybe not so much as their fishing, but in terms of the pre-fishing and finding the spots. Again, this is a place where stumps are going to play a big factor in how they catch fish. This is going to probably be a spawn or pre-spawn fishing. When I looked at the 2024 season, this was the one I thought, this is where the big fish are going to be caught. Look for Patrick Walters to just do really well in this tournament. I think Patrick Walters and Keep Combs are going to do well. Jason Christie is also really good there. Brandon Palinick. The big name guys are going to do well there at Lake Fork. And that's going to be a fun one to watch. In March, they have the Classic. I'm not going to go over the Classic. Only uh, 42 of the elite anglers make the Classic, unless they have won one of the Opens. But I think the Classic is going to be, in March, is going to be another great tournament in Tulsa for at the Grand Lakes of the Cherokees. Another time that they're going back to another place. That's the key theme here. You're going to see a lot of these places are well-known bass elite haunts. That's where they go. They're good at this. When I looked at, they, they have nine events this year and six of them, and they're in six states. The biggest thing I realized was that since 2010, they've been to these spots, these nine events, 34 times since 2010. So it, these are places that the anglers know really well at this point in time. The third stop, but technically the fourth stop, is at the Harris Chain Lakes. Right over there. This is my home pond. These are my home ponds. Harris Chain Lakes consists of eight lakes. You have Apopka, that's where I live, Dora, Harris, Griffin, uh, Eustis, Beauclair, uh, Carlton, and Yale. This is going to be a pro spawn fishing. They are going there in April. While the fishing will probably be pretty good, this is not something you're not gonna see giant 10 pounders. Could it happen? Possibly, but I probably think you'll see more three to five pound fish. The Harris Chain Lake is well known for having a lot, I mean a lot, a lot, a lot of three to five pound fish. And it should make for a fun tournament. Ford Facing Sonar probably, this will be one of the spots where Ford Facing Sonar is not being used. They're going to probably fish early. They'll have an early bite and a mid-afternoon bite, but most of the guys are going to be on the bank. Now, in 2022, Buddy Gross won, Drew Benton, and two guys that I think you'll have to really watch while they're down here in Florida is John Cox and Brandon Lester. Now, Brandon lives in Tennessee, but Brandon does really, really well down here in Florida. John Cox, I think he's quite possibly the favorite here. He hasn't won here, but that is John's bread and butter. John Cox is going to do well here, and he's also going to do well in Palatka at the St. John's. The fourth stop, technically fifth stop if we count the classic, is at St. John's River in Palatka, Florida, where they've been there 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, 2016, 2014, 2012, and 2011. This is an exact quote, quote, when Rick Klun won in 2019, I covered the elites up there and watched him and or Chris Zaldane bring in two bags that I never thought I'd ever see bigger bass in my life, but it was at the beginning of the year. This one is uh, just right after the Harris chain. They're not going to be pre-spawn. Fishing's going to be really good. It's going to be really warm, but it's not going to be another one where they just bust out giant bags. This is, it just won't happen. Forward facing sonar could play a little part in certain things, but not as much. So getting into my story, in 2019, I went to cover Rick Klun and watch the elites up there because it's about, it's probably two hours for me. I showed up as I was walking in, there was a Toyota model that was walking in the general vicinity that I was walking. Do you live around here? And she said, yeah, I live in Palatka. I go, what is there to do in Palatka? This is the exact quote. She said, there's two things to do in Palatka. Fish and f That's exactly what she said. 
Now, Palatka has had the elites there for so many years, it's ridiculous at this point in time. When you go there, you see the same people. When I show up, I say hi to the people and shake, shake hands with people I've known for so many years. In 2023, John Cruz, John Cox, and Patrick Walters did really well. 2021, Brian New, Greg Hackney, uh, Seth Fider, and then Patrick Walters. In 2020, uh, 2020, Paul Mueller, John Cruz, and Patrick Walters. In 2019, Rick Clun, Johnston, uh, Menendez, and Patrick Walters. The common thing you're going to hear in this is this schedule really favors Patrick Walters. Great angler. Absolutely ridiculous angler. He's going to do well up uh, in Louisiana and Texas. But when he comes down to Florida, other than the Harris chain, he's going to start doing, he, he's going to do well at the St. John's. The schedule this year is perfect for, and I'm going to say it right now. Right now. Mark it down. This is the day after this thing came out. Patrick Walters should win the Angler of the Year this year in 2024. He should. This, this schedule favors him more than anybody. And I think he has a great chance of Angler of the Year. So from the St. John's, they go to Lake Murray. Now, they've been to Lake Murray a, a few times. In 2023, Benton, Shryrock, Fujita, and Walters did very well. It's, a, it's an 18,000 acre lake. Max depth is 40 feet. And really, April is the best time to go fish up there. They will be probably having a good fish. It's going to be another post-spawn. And forward facing sonar is going to play a huge factor in that tournament. doesn't mean people can't go up shallow and fish and probably will do well. But you're going to see people offshore near in, in that middle range using forward facing sonar to find out where they are and what they're biting. I think that the Lake Murray will be a fun pond or fun tournament to watch. But as we've went through five or six already, none of them really hit that mark of being on fire other than the first two with Toledo. I think Toledo Bend might be just too early, but Lake Fork is going to be a great one. I don't think you'll have that same fishery uh, on uh, Lake Murray that you do up north, uh, that you do at Lake Fork, but still should be a great one. The next one is the Wheeler Lake in Alabama. It's 67,000 acres. It's the largest of three man-made reservoirs along the Tennessee River. They haven't been there recently. 2016 was the last time where they were there. John Cruz, Swindle, Brandon Card, and Brandon Lester all did very well. I think Wheeler Lake's another one where you're going to see forward-facing sonar have a huge influence on what they're fishing and how they're fishing. I think when you get to Wheeler Lake and then the next one, Smith Lake, which they've never been to, those are going to have huge influences on with forward-facing sonar. When we get to Smith Lake, that's in Alabama, 21,000 acres. It is 200 feet deep is the max depth. They have 500 miles of shoreline. So it's going to be, this is going to be the toughest spot of the year for most people. Not that the fishing is going to be bad, but that fishery is more for spotted bass and stripers than anything. I think that there'll be some decent sized fish, but I see this Smith Lake as the toughest spot of the year for all the anglers, just because it's going to be a new spot. I think those Tennessee guys, Lester and some other, some other guys are going to do real well. Lester card probably will do very well there, but overall that's going to be the toughest one of the year in my opinion now just like palaka the last two just have been they're worn out they're just worn out at this point in time i could probably go to lake champlain and st lawrence river and catch five pound smallmouth i know i've watched enough fishing of the years of these several years numerous years that they've went out there that i know the spots to go fish i know how to fish it it's not while they're going to catch a lot of good fish, this isn't a surprise. Again, obviously Lake Champlain in, and St. Lawrence River are going to, they just, they've got the money behind them to have the elites come there. And they have, they have the crowds and everything else. It's a great fishery. Don't get me wrong. The St. Lawrence River is a great fishery. I would like to see them go someplace different. I'm sick of seeing the same things over and over and over like Palatka. I don't like that. It's just 
it's gotten boring to me at this point in time. But we're going to talk about Lake Champlain, which has 100, 435 miles and 120 miles end to end. They've been there in 2023, 2021, 2020, 2017, 2007, and 2006. In 2023, Vegeta, Atkins, and Walters finished 7th. In 2021, Schmidt, Combs, Zaldane, and Walters finished 7th there. And then in 2020, Palnick, Fighter, Mullins, and then Walters finished in 28th at that one too. The St. Lawrence River, which is their last tournament of the year, is, we've just seen enough of this one. It's it's gotten old. They've been there in 2023, 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2015, and 2013. It's just old. It is. It, it lacks creativity that they have to continuously go to the same spots. Because if you're really good at those spots, you're really good. 2023, Walters just won. 100 plus pounds of smallmouth. Who would ever thought that could ever happen? Chris Johnson is going to be very successful. Fujita is good. 2023, uh, I don't even know how to say his name, but Johnson and Walters finished in 12th. In 2021, Ito, Atkins, Wenlet, and Johnston did well. 2020, Chris Johnson did well. 2019, Frazier and Johnston. As the end of the year goes and you get towards those smallmouth areas, Chris Johnson and his, the Johnston brothers are going to do well. The Seth Fighter is going to do well too. Brandon Palinick is going to do very well. There's a bunch of guys that just are great smallmouth fisher, fishermen. Those are another two places where forward-facing sonar will play a humongous role in because the water's a little bit deeper and they're going to be offshore looking for rocks and stumps and that kind of stuff in the water where smallmouth will be hiding. Or really not hiding, but they will be trying to ambush prey. These last two tournaments, it's all about forward-facing sonar. 100%. If you're not using it or not proficient at it, you're not going to win those tournaments. It's a shame that it's come down to that. But in probably, I would say, I think Toledo Bend forward-facing sonar is going to play a factor. I think in Lake Fork, it's going to play a huge factor. When you get to the Harris Chain, and the Harris Chain is the one that I don't think it's going to play a big factor in. Only because the Harris Chain doesn't have very deep water. I will say... The side sonar and that kind of stuff, the 360, that is going to have a huge factor at the uh, the Harris Chain because those are spots where if you can find grass at that time of the year, you're going to find fish. Harris Chain should be a fun one, but not big fish. I think forward-facing sonar plays a factor at the St. Johns River, Lake Murray, Wheeler Lake, and Smith Lake. So if I know there's a lot of people, like really 90% of the, of the people that watch that one video about should forward-facing sonar be banned or illegal, 90% of the people said we shouldn't have it. It shouldn't be used. Unfortunately, they're not going to ban it. They're not going to do anything. And that's another video to do. But it's going to play a huge factor in this tournament series for 2024. Again, I just think there's no creativity in the Bass people. I think they have the best tournament out there. But continuously going to these same places time after time after time after time. It's just boring. I'll be honest. I think Champlain and St. Lawrence River are worn out. They're like that old mitt. You know exactly the grooves to it. You know where that the sweet spot is and you're going to you're going to get that ball in that exact spot. I wish they would do more to become creative and be better at putting harder or better fisheries in the limelight. But again, they've got to make money. And they're getting paid to go to those spots. So you have to remember. Again, Patrick Walters, Bass should be more creative. And click that like and subscribe button. Gotcha, didn't I? Okay, thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it interesting. It's just my take on what's going on in Bass for 2024. I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed. But it is what it is. I mean, I'm not having some of these spots that they go back again just doesn't mean I have to listen to Mercer. And that's always a positive. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.